Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Josh. I am a seventh year certified financial planner and I run my own wealth management business. Now I know what you might be thinking, that's a little fishy. This guy seems too young to run his own financial services company. He must have inherited from his dad or something. And the truth is I've kind of just taken the throw yourself into the arena and figure it out as you go approach to my life and my entire career. And that's actually how I ended up here. Or at least that's how my mind plays mental gymnastics to justify all the suffering in retrospect. Now this whole go off on your own and figure it out thing might sound seductive and cool, but the reality is I only get to learn lessons the hard way, right? If you took a traditional route into financial advice or into finance at all, you probably work under some 30 year veteran who can teach you the tricks of the trade and show you what you could be doing better. For me though, I only really learned by getting slapped in the face. It's the world that teaches me, not some mentor. And so ultimately this could be lost money. It could be lost time. It could be unsatisfied clients or just existential regret. And so today I want to help you out by telling you one of these biggest slaps in the face that I've ever received, one of those massive existential learning moments that held me back a long time, and that will make your life easier. In return, you'll watch some hunky-dory MLM ad that Grant Cardone paid for, and that money will go to me. Sound like a fair trade? Let's dive in. Now, today's topic is financial advisor marketing and one of the biggest slaps in the face I've ever had. And so I've been creating internet content for probably a decade. In the early stages, it was blogs and podcasts. And later on, in this most recent rendition of doing this YouTube channel for almost two and a half years now, this is the one that has been probably the most successful or has had the most reach because I've been the most consistent. As anyone who's ever tried posting content for an extended period of time knows, funny things start to happen. You start getting engagement from people you never expected. People might walk up to you on the street and say they like your videos. People might like and comment and engage and share your stuff. And not only that, but as you stay consistent and produce more and more, those kind of weird one-off benefits start to increase larger and larger. And this is the actual story of how I built a financial advisory business so young. I was posting enough internet content, it created enough interest in what I was doing that I could actually go off and convert that demand into a living for myself. I didn't wanna to go to university and this list of potential clients kind of gave me the encouragement to skip that piece, go get my investment licenses and start the business that I run now. But anyways, the main point here is as I produced content in multiple different ways, always related to finance, I would start to pick up on the people who were engaging this the most. Some people would directly message me. Some people would comment on every single thing I posted. Some people would like a bunch of different things. And I would always take a list or take note of who was interested in what I was putting out. Maybe it was somebody in my class in high school. Maybe it was somebody from one of my Facebook connections that kept liking everything I posted. I would take that name and I would record it in a spreadsheet. I think of these people as leads. Someone, for whatever reason, might be curious to explore potentially working with me. Over a process of years, I started to accumulate names by the dozens and then into the hundreds. And the oldest or one of the oldest videos of me on YouTube is actually me giving a speech to like 50 other financial advisors, showing them my process for how I use the internet to kind of create this massive list of potential leads. And so the process of me building my financial services business was pretty simple. It was create a bunch of content and blast it out across your social media platforms track who's interested, and then reach out and engage those people who are interested to see if they would want to potentially be a client. I would work through this list of people over and over one by one until I had bugged them a sufficient number of times to say, all right, this is a little cringy. I might be trying a little too hard with this person I've asked two or three times. I'm going to delete them from this list. That's important. Fast forward three or four years, what I learned in this business as I actually started to succeed and get momentum was that you are not in control of your prospect stage or timing in their life. Sometimes, you know, in sales, we learn these things like if the prospect isn't saying yes, they're not interested in what you have to do. And so you kind of discard them and say, okay, let's move on to the next one. There's no use wasting time here. But what I realized after three or four years is a lot of those people I prospected or asked if they'd be interested to work with me three years ago started to randomly show up when it was convenient for them. Back in, let's call it 2019, there was no reason, but now in 2023, there's an inheritance or they moved an employer and there's a big pension plan to transfer. One of the difficult parts of this business is that you really have no control over when your prospect might need you. Remember what I said earlier, when I bugged somebody sufficiently, I would delete them from my list. And so over the course of many years of me running through these lists, I probably deleted hundreds of names. 
you know, all of that memory of these different people who were engaging with my stuff or potentially interested and I bugged them up times, I would delete them. And what I realized three or four years later is that those people weren't necessarily disinterested or didn't like me. Maybe it just wasn't the right time. And so I had potentially thrown away hundreds of future deals. Back then I was too naive to understand that maybe the timing just wasn't right. And so for those of you starting out in the business, I wanna take the rest of this video and make it a high impact lesson for you. You know, the last video I did was reacting to Alex Hermosi's investment advice. And when I was reading through some of his content, one thing I heard that was actually quite profound was this idea of what a lead is. A lead is not a lead until you have an actionable piece of information along with it. If you know somebody's interested, but all you have is their name, you don't have a phone number, you don't have an Instagram account, you don't have an email, You've got nothing because what you have is a name, but no way to act on said name unless you're going to look through the phone book and try to find them and cold call them. A YouTube subscriber is not a lead. An Instagram follower is a lead. A client who refers their friend by name isn't a lead, even though it might seem like it, but an email from someone who's interested is a lead. You need some sort of actionable piece of information to really consider something a lead. Now, in order to really set this video up for a great lesson, I wanna add one more prerequisite to what we're gonna talk about today, which is that a lead is not valuable until it's nurtured. And so we have two lessons here. A lead isn't a lead until we have actionable information and a lead isn't valuable unless it's nurtured. Okay, let's take those two things. Now, I wanna get into the meat of this video. Listen, just like that feeling I had when I had tons of prospects coming in from my content related to financial advice and people interested to work with me, just in that same way, I have felt that all over again when I started this YouTube channel, but now it was a little different. This time with YouTube, it's been hundreds of aspiring or early stage financial advisors looking for some sort of coaching success program mastermind. Now this time, as I kind of kicked the tires on this idea and saw the demand come in, I learned the lesson from when I built my wealth management business that I need to, even if I don't think this will become a thing, start tracking where the demand is and get actionable emails. This way I can track leads, garner feedback, discuss with that audience what they might want, and potentially down the road, I've got a list of people, not only for feedback, but a list of people who, if I could create a compelling enough offer or a great enough service or product, might be interested in engaging me or you know, being part of a community or some sort of product that I develop. So given that I completely missed the boat on the email list in my first three years in wealth management, what I wanna do is show you what I'm doing now that I've learned from that experience. I am quite literally going to take you on a tour of my email list software, my strategy, the automations I use, and how this whole thing works, the philosophy behind it. Because if you're an entry-level financial advisor and you know nothing about email lists, you don't find them valuable, you've never heard of this term before, you've heard of like newsletters and sending out quarterly reports, but you just don't see the value in maybe having an email nurture sequence, you're gonna need to watch this. I highly recommend you do, especially if you wanna go independent, right? If you wanna start your own business over time, this is essential. Welcome to ConvertKit. This is the software that I use and that I teach other young and aspiring financial advisors to use if they want to start this whole idea of email nurture so that you don't throw away all the prospects you have over the first three, four, five, ten, 10, your career, right? As you go through your career, certain people are just gonna fall off your deal flow. They're gonna fall off the sales pipeline do you want to have those gone forever or do you want to find somewhere to nurture them, keep them warm, let them opt themselves out instead of you just kicking them out, right? People need our services. Sometimes it's just not the right time for them. And so this is my method now of overcoming that problem, which again, the world slapped me in the face and taught me this the hard way. And so what you can see here is I have an email list. I've been doing this one for about three months now based on the YouTube channel. It's got about 874 subscribers to it. You'll see some incredible statistics here. You might think, oh, there's all those people marketing to me by email, I never really open those, I kind of delete them. But if it's something you're interested in, like my audience is, 85% of these emails are getting opened. The engagement here is actually quite strong because somebody had to opt in, they chose to opt into the email list to receive my messaging. Many of you who are watching this video are probably on the email list. And so I wanna kind of walk you through how this works from my end so you can kind of see it. Now it also shows, you know, in the lifetime here, I've had 10,368 emails sent, 
but I want to bring you through the flow of how this sort of thing works. How do people really get onto the email list? Well, one of two ways. The first way might be I get a DM or an email and someone says, Hey, Josh, really appreciate the videos. Love what you do. Just wanted to say thank you so much for putting out the content. I find it helpful. I say amazing. You sound like you'd be perfect for my email list. That's where I kind of dive into more of a blog style version of unfiltered me. Here's the link to sign up. And so that's one way is direct people come in inbound. I refer them to the email list or something like this, which we'd call a lead magnet. Here's the idea in today's video. I'm actually talking very seriously right now. If you want to learn where I went to find out how to do email list marketing, to find out what resources I used, what companies I use, the different places I had to go through to learn all these things the hard way, hit the link down in the description below. And you're going to get an email of my guide that just shows all my top resources and shows a deeper dive into how I set this thing up on my end. You're going to get a deeper look at how to do these things I'm talking about in this video today. So just hit that link in the description below and you'll see how all this works. That's called a lead magnet. I just gave you a lead magnet. It's something that gives you more value in return for your email. And so I'll kind of talk about this for a second. I can go to my landing pages and form section and I have a whole different list of a bunch of lead magnets. Some I've released, some I haven't. So for instance, I had a video that came out talking about how to crush your CFP exam. And so I create a lead magnet to give people a way deeper dive than I could do in a 15 minute video about how to crush your CFP exam. And so people will opt in here. I'll kind of write this targeted messages about how in my early twenties, I scored in the 92nd percentile. I want to help you pass, provide me your email. And I'm going to send you like a 20 minute video showing you exactly what links to click, what things to study, what the weights are on the exams, those sorts of things. I'm just trying to provide value and in return, get a more is intimate a weird word relationship with you by having your email that we can chat. I also had a very popular video on chat GPT and you can see the conversion rates here, guys. Look at this number here of the 310 people who clicked that link, 60% of them converted. So these convert really high. And so I have a lead magnet that says, learn how I found hours of free time every week using chat GPT for financial advisors. And people say, huh, this new technology is kind of freaky. I want to save time. I want to use it. I want to leverage it. And so they enter in their email and now they're on my list. And so what happens once they're on my list? We've kind of talked a little bit about the initial part, how they come onto the list, right? What happens next? Well, that depends on how they opted in. So first things first, there will be a list of sequences that correspond to the different landing pages. And so if someone wanted that chat GPT one, I now have an email sequence over here on this right hand page that is two emails long that are automated that shows me giving a much deeper explainer with a PDF attachment. And so now there's an automated flow of emails coming to these people to provide the value they requested. So it works like this. Somebody opts in, they get the value I promised in a sequence of valuable emails, and then they go onto my blast list. And that's where we just have general broadcasts. I'm just providing recurring value to nurture the list to make sure that I'm staying in front of people. I'm engaging them. And the people who want to hear more from me can hear more from me. The people who don't want can opt out. They hit unsubscribe. And that's great because those aren't the kind of people I want to talk to anyways. I don't want to try to pull people in who don't want to be in. I want to get the people who are loyal and like my message to stick around and stay warm and stay nurtured. And so that's kind of how the sequencing works. In terms of doing that, I have to automate things. I have to build automations that say, okay, when somebody comes into lead magnet CFP exam that we automate in the first sequence and then we send them to weekly broadcasts. And so we have an assortment of different automations. So we've learned how for you, a prospect or for me, someone in my audience comes into our email list. We send them an automated schedule of delivered value that they wanted. And then we nurture them every week. If they don't want to be part of that, they unsubscribe. That's fine. And if they want to stay with it, they stay with it. And over time, maybe we give eight emails in a row that are just pure value, kind of storytelling or entertainment or a hard lesson I had to learn. And then maybe one out of 10 emails will have an offer. And I don't do this yet. I'm not selling anything on here. But for you and I as advisors, every seventh email or every eighth email could be a testimonial from a happy client, or it could be an offer into a one time discount, or it could be some sort of promotion that inspires action from the people we've been nurturing. And so in just a couple months, being able to get 874 subscribers to this, I have a pool of audience members. Maybe you're a part of this. Thank you so much who are subscribing to a more intimate setting with me, which is fantastic. And as advisors, if I had done this from day one, I imagine this email list for my advisor book 
could be 10,000 people. If you have 10,000 people on an email list and you do really great thoughtful value production to that email list, maybe you can convert 1% of those people every single year into being clients and now you're full as an advisor. And so there's so much thought being given to being on TikTok, being on Instagram, doing social media. And I think one of the powerful things a lot of people overlook is just a simple email nurture sequence. And so anyways, guys, all in all, if you wanna expedite your process as an advisor, and if you want to skip three or four years of wasted time that I went through, I think you wanna track interest, you wanna value the emails of that interest equal to the name, and you wanna nurture them and keep them in the loop over time. Let your prospects opt out of your process rather than deleting them off your list and never thinking about them again. Sometimes the timing just isn't right. So anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you got any value whatsoever, make sure to hit that like button below, hit subscribe, and we will see you in the next video.